In the DNVR Buffs after dark. What a night. What a night. Buffs get back in the win column. Brendan Loomis gets a dub. It's just so happy. It's such a, such a great time for him. Like, he's deserved it. He's gone through so much. Just so much fun getting to see him have a night like this. And he deserves it. Uh, I'm Henry Chisholm. And today we have, well, I should say tonight, or maybe even like this morning. Are we to that point yet? We're Almost, close. Yeah. Uh, Jake Schwanitz, our guy. You guys probably read the. Uh, uh, film room that he posted over DMVR buffs uh, actually just came out this morning going through a bunch of the cool things that Brennan Rice has done. That was dope. You've heard him on the DMVR buffs podcast before, and now you're here talking about the game. How's it going? Yes, sir. Doing well, man. Uh, riding that high after that victory, man. I may not be a, a buff, but uh, that was thrilling. That was awesome. So much fun. Double overtime. Double overtime yeah. is just the best. Yeah, just uh, chaos ensuing in the second half. It was wild. Let's uh hey Kale, can you pull up that comment real quick from Tyler Brown? Uh here's what he has to say. Well, I enjoy the enthusiasm. Unless your opponent is ranked or at the very least bowl eligible, you shouldn't rush the field. And I'm glad he brought this up because this is something that I wanted to talk about. This is my first question for you, Jake. Okay. <laughs> can you be rushing the field against Oregon State? Oh man. It's you know, the rules, I guess, against rushing the field would say no. Um, but man, this is just such a big victory for this program. Um, you mentioned it, just a lot of adversity early on in the season uh, for the whole team and Brendan Lewis. And the whole team and Lewis just rose up today. So uh, considering the circumstances, I'll give it a pass just because you can really feel the momentum of this program building now. Absolutely. And, you know, it's. Well, I, I actually didn't think that they I hadn't considered it. I didn't think there was a chance they'd rush the field. Um, and so obviously I was out there. I, I figured I'd just follow Brendan Lewis around because I mean, the, this has to be like basically the best night of the kid's life. Yeah. Um, so I go over, you know, we're, we're watching him talk to Sam, all that kind of stuff. Turn around and the field's packed with people. And I was like, oh, wait, we did this? This is what's going on tonight? And I honestly haven't had a chance to really think like, is it is it a situation? And I don't know. I mean overtime works like I feel like I feel like if you're in double overtime rushing the field is acceptable you remember the circumstances for the buffs it's the fact that it's a young team it's Brendan Lewis it's a student section that's been pretty full for the entire season which was really surprising to a lot of people and why not why not rush the field everybody's excited uh, does it mean that when, you know, if the basketball team beats Kansas, when they play, what is that, like the 21st of December, something like that, does it devalue rushing the field or storming the court? Maybe, probably, but eh, it was apples a lot and of oranges. Fun. Apples and oranges. I mean, I, you can get on it, I guess. I mean, you're probably going to hear some national hate from it, but who cares, man, especially if you're an alum or a fan of this program. This is just a huge night uh, for Buffs. Seriously, I mean, the last time we we there was there was any national conversation around CU was when ESPN was calling the Arizona game the pillow fight of the week. So <laughs> hey, if you're getting some attention, I take the attention at this point. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, and and to be honest, like we're we've got a lot to talk about tonight. We probably won't go too long just because I'm not sure if you guys at home have clocks or watches or cell phones that tell time, but it's pretty late. And we I do still get an have extra hour about tonight. This. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. I had forgotten we lose an hour. I might just not sleep tonight. 9.30 a.m. Uh, I've got to be at the bar for the tailgate. And 
my god it's, <laughs> it's gonna be terrible i saved my coffee from this morning so i'm just gonna keep well, thankfully that. thankfully you have the high from this game to kind of carry you through it was um i mean you were there at the field so i'm assuming you didn't hear but the announcers kept on saying that the students were like changing sides during overtime to like mess with oregon or oregon <laughs> state sorry um, because obviously they wanted to go away from that in the second overtime. They're playing into them the first mm-hmm. overtime because it was the Buffs' choice. Um, but I guess uh, I, we didn't see it on the broadcast, but the announcers were saying that the oh. students were mobile and moving around the stadium. Oh, it was it was such a – it was so much fun. You know, so for us, for media, I'm down there on the field before the game, in the press box during the game, and then uh, for like the last five minutes or so, you go back down there. And obviously those last five minutes turned out to be five minutes and two overtimes – but to you can't like walk up the sideline where the players are because I mean you can't be letting media do that. So you have to go up into the stands and around. And so between those overtimes, there was no I don't think there was probably a TV break. It was so fast. And all of us just like there's probably 20 with all the photographers and that are like running through the first row of the bleachers trying yeah. to get to the other end. It was it was a wild night. It was a wild night. And to be honest, like there, it almost feels like there were two games tonight. There was a game that I saw from up in the press box where I was taking notes and sending tweets and guys play well and guys play poorly. And then there was the that last, whatever, five minutes in overtime where just yep. chaos happened. And I honestly haven't processed that. Getting my mind back into press box mode is not something that is going to happen tonight. There's a real chance of that. Um, but let's jump in. You know, it says biggest takeaways. What's, what's your biggest takeaway tonight, Jake? Uh, biggest takeaway is that Brendan Lewis might actually be the future of this program. Um, mm-hmm. It was really something that was heavily debated, um, you know, when after that loss to A&M. Um, I think uh, the AD or someone was mentioned on the broadcast saying that how, they, how the Buffs played in that game kind of raised expectations higher than they should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it totally made sense, obviously, once you looked at the remaining games after that. But Brendan Lewis just coming into his own was huge tonight. Yeah. And, and everybody in the chat, let us know. Uh, what what are your biggest takeaways? Because we want to hear from you guys. Because sometimes we miss things, especially when it's uh, as late as it is. But yeah, <laughs> I think biggest takeaway has to be Brendan Lewis. He looks so good. He looks so good. And it's been so much fun. I mean, three touchdowns he did efficiently. He, he made plays in the big moments. Just what a night for him because he's he's been he's I, I he says he stays off of Twitter and stays off of all that stuff. And he doesn't see what people are saying. That's really tough to believe. It's 2021. And even if he doesn't know, the rest of his team absolutely knows. And, and it's not like they're going up to him and saying, here's what people are saying. But there's a vibe. There's a vibe. And and for him to have a game like this after a good performance last week too, and we shouldn't overlook that it's gotta be exciting. And you guys saw, we know we opened with the video after the game, him just getting to see his family after that. Oh, I can't imagine going through his mind tonight, but just such a, such a great night for Brendan Lewis. And yeah, I mean, I went into the, or I was planning on going into this off season, expecting JT shroud when he comes back from the ACL injury, to be the guy. I think, you know, maybe Drew Carter competes, uh, the freshman who hasn't seen the field much this year. Maybe Owen McCown shows up and, and immediately competes to be the quarterback. Um, they probably add somebody from the transfer portal, and maybe he comes in and can be. But I really thought it was going to be JT Shroud. Now, though, I, I think things change. I think that Brennan Lewis has a huge opportunity in front of him, and it's just so exciting to have a freshman quarterback play like he's played the last couple weeks. Absolutely. Of course, three games to go. So still a few more hurdles for him to clear before he really earns the job heading into next offseason. Um, but his growth has been tremendous. Mm-hmm. They mentioned it uh, many times on the broadcast, just his poise and just how calm he looked, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, just really stepping up in the pocket, looking confident as a quarterback. Um, he really didn't look like a freshman in those final moments. So it was just impressive overall. Easily his best game uh, today, I think, is above. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he's had a couple of those recently. Um, I'll throw another big takeaway out there. The offensive line's legit. You know, they they obviously, here's the backstory. We got to go through all this stuff. Mitch Rodriguez is the offensive line coach. He's been the offensive line coach for a season and a half. And then before the Oregon game, I guess like a week before, it was more like after the game before that, uh, he gets fired. 
And they replace him with William Vallejos, who's an up-and-coming coach who I know that the Buffs are excited about. He has some some ties to some really good coaches, including Brian Dable. Um, and Carl said that his recommendation went a long way. Um, but, you know, you make that change, you don't expect to see a lot of a difference in the offensive line with four games, five games left in, this, in, in the season. Flash forward to the Oregon game, they give up one sack to Kayvon Thibodeau and, and the rest of that group. Flash forward to this week, they don't give up a single sack. And Jarek Broussard looks like himself running for over 150 yards. This offensive line's for real. This offensive line's for real. And, and William Vallejos deserves all sorts of credit for the work that he's done and the way he's been able to turn this around so quickly, which is just shocking to me. Yeah, it's very rare that you see a in-season firing like that kind of really change how a whole position group is played. Um, but the offensive line was fantastic. They were just crushing Oregon State um, all along the edge. Inside, uh, there was just massive holes. Of course, Jarek Broussard finally over 100 yards. Um, first time, well, I guess he did that against Northern Colorado, but first time against a FBS opponent, right? Um, didn't get the touchdown, but a 6.3 average is fantastic, especially with how much he struggled. All the running backs struggled uh, earlier in the season. It's just a great turnaround all around. Totally. Totally. Um, you know, I was talking to Brady Russell this week, the tight end, um, and we talked about all sorts of things. But one of the things I brought up was just like, you know, the offensive line is playing better. What's what's that about? Like, what do you think the difference is? And he said, honestly, like these tackles, they just played better when they played Oregon. Like, it's simple as that. They just played better. And it happened against Kayvon. And it's just like, yeah, it's, that's weird, right? And he's like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But but here we are again, and they've just turned it around. Those guys look like they belong playing Power 5 football, which wasn't true for most of the season. And, you know, with a lot of these things, it's it's a shame that it's taken this long for it to happen. It would have been really fun. You know, if you take this Buffs team right now and what they've got figured out, throw in Nate Landman with what we saw tonight, too just have them restart the season and we get to see this whole team through again. That'd be so much fun, but obviously that's not how it works. And we've got a few weeks left to, to see what they can do and try to build some hype going into next year. Technically, I guess bowl eligibility is still on the table. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks if it's still on the table, <laughs> but, but yeah, this offensive line has really opened some doors and, and it's been a lot of fun and hopefully it continues. And hopefully that means William Vallejos can, can get the full-time job here. Uh, what, what you got for another big takeaway, Jake? Um, I guess more on the negative side of things. Um, we've kind of seen, I wrote about it last week, the emergence of Brendan Rice. Um, of course, Daniel Arias had the big touchdown. He had another nice grab, but I think the just lack of a true go-to guy in the receiving game for Colorado is really hindering this offense. And it's really kind of stunting Brendan Lewis's growth to agree to a certain degree. Obviously he's made a, plenty of strides to this point, but he doesn't have that go-to guy. Um, you know, from watching Colorado State so much, if he had someone like a Trey McBride there that was just an easy dump off target, someone that can make those contested catches, uh, kind of bail him out at times, then we'd really see some progression in this offense. So now you really have to hope for Brendan Rice or Chenault, someone to really just come up and just take that first receiver role by the horns. Yeah. And to be honest, I thought that Brendan Rice had taken that. I thought that, you know, two of the last three weeks he goes for 100 yards. Maybe you read a little bit more into the, the game in the middle where he got six yards, but but he was pretty quiet tonight. He, he picks up the touchdown. He has a couple nice returns like he does. And, and I, to, to Brendan's credit, he is going to give you something every single game. And when you're talking about a freshman receiver, which was what he is, even though we had COVID last year, it kind of screws things up. When you're talking about freshman receiver, you don't expect that. You, you expect to have some games where it's just like, where was he? At the very least, he'll make one big play. He'll, he'll have a touchdown catch. He'll have a, a return past the 50, something like that. But yeah, I mean, you, you need him consistently picking up 50, 60, 70 yards in the passing game on top of providing some 100-yard games. You mentioned Vontae Chenault. You know, he's another guy who, this was his first game this season because of the suspensions. There was there was stuff to like for sure, but you know it's going to be a process trying to to get back to to what he's capable of being after spending that much time on the sideline. And you know for him, it's probably about getting his game back to where it should be 
over the course of the next few weeks. And you really are missing that guy. Um, so I think that's a good point. Um, I, I like uh, we've got our guy, uh, Selly, in the chat saying, on defense, biggest takeaway was all the missed tackles. It was rough at times. Yeah, defensively, it was uh, not good for extended periods. Um, you did get a big-time sack from Carson Wells. I think it was in the first half. You also got an interception in the first half. So the defense, while they did struggle, they played well enough. Um, you know, they really struggled on the ground game, um, allowing five yards to carry, 220 total yards. Um, that was really the biggest issue I saw. I thought the secondary played okay, but, uh, yeah, defensively, you could play a lot better. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, the, the tackling, it really kicked in on those two touchdowns. And I can't remember which ones they were, um, but but it was something like the second to last and the one before that. Um, but but on both of those, you have guys making contact with the, with the ball carrier, and instead of forcing them to have a, a first and goal from the nine, you're letting them just have the touchdown. And you can't have that because uh, – especially today in football, it's so tough to stop teams from moving between the 20s when they have the threat of moving the ball downfield. You've got to be able to, to give yourself a chance to, to get a stop down there and force them to kick a field goal instead. And when you're just letting them get touchdowns instead of field goals, whenever they get inside the 20, it's going to cause problems. And it caused problems tonight. It's just that Brendan Lewis and his offense, we were, they were able to overcome him, which is fun. But the tackling needs to get better. Um, one of the missed tackles was Trevor Woods, freshman safety. I, I saw, I think it was Tyler Brown in the chat say, uh, he, he one of his big takeaways was that he played well. Uh, mentioned the one-handed interception, or almost interception. He did play well. And he's played well quite a bit. Um, he's really carved out a role for himself in uh, this defense, which is fun. You know, you love seeing young players force their way onto the field, and he's done that. Um, I, I thought that he was going to catch that. From the press box, it looks like he had it. It was. I need to see the ball roll out. The replay is pretty spectacular because it, it it's almost like Odell Beckham. It hits him right in the palm. He's got it there. It just couldn't quite come down with it. I actually, um, I want to talk about the end of the game real quick. Um, specifically, the last drive, um, or the, I guess the second to last drive from Oregon State, where they went to kick the field goal um, and they missed it. And they were talking about um, the announcers about icing the kicker at that moment in time. They didn't. So he missed it. Carl Durrell, though, two timeouts at the end of the game, but the kicker kicking from 60 yards out, doesn't use a single timeout and he drills the ball. Yep. How do you, I just, how do you, how did you process that? You know, again, I was down there and in the moment you're like, okay, here it comes, here it comes. They're actually going to kick this. I can't believe they're going to kick this. I didn't think of, calling the timeout. Now, obviously, like, if you're the head coach, you've got to have that crossing your mind. I think that, I mean, icing is the policy, right? Like, like that is... Especially that in is, that situation, at the right at the end of the game. Exactly. Like, like, that's what you expect. That is what you are supposed to do by the book. It's just the way things go. Um, and so whenever you don't do the thing that everybody does in that situation, and it doesn't work, it's it's going to be a bad look. At the same time, is there something to, I mean, what's a kicker thinking when he runs out there? He's thinking, okay, I'm going to get all set up. They're going to blow the whistle. This one isn't going to count. Maybe you get in his head if the whistle doesn't come. I, I Maybe, but he hit the kick. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, it if you work. call the timeout right when the center lifts his head up and he nails that kick and then he has to go make it again, like uh. that's just, that's all kinds of head games. I think that was a little bit of a missed opportunity uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, they come out with a W, but I think they had a chance to wrap it up earlier. I mean, you can't take the two timeouts with you at the end of the game, so might as well use them. Did you think there was a chance he was going to make a 60-yard field goal? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> college kickers, man. Are you serious? 60 yards? Uh, we've just uh, seen from NFL and college some insane kicking. Uh, I think we're like actually getting to a point where kickers are getting like a lot better because yeah. 60 yards in college is literally like unheard of for most points. I know. I, there were, I, I'm not sure if it's true or not because I was down on the field. I wasn't up in the press box. So when something like that happens, you're in the press box. You know, they'll, they'll say that's the longest kick at Folsom since or longest game, whatever. They'll have some stats cooked up for something like that. Right. Um, I, I thought I heard somebody say that it was the longest field goal at Folsom. I mean, you'd believe it, right? Like it was 60 yards and it's a college kicker. Just unbelievable. And. Again, we were talking, so we were in the far end zone. We were on the other side, 
And the play before you're looking at with like, what was it? Five seconds, I think. Um, it's like, what do you do here? Yeah. And I said, you know, you, you run a quick out route. You, you have that. And if it's there and you can get out of bounds, you take it right next to him, though. You have somebody going deep and you lob it up if it's not there. I didn't think when they made the throw that he had gone far enough. I was like, well, they're basically still at midfield, and you have that weird perspective from the other side. But then you look up, and it's like, yeah, you got to the 42-yard line. Congrats on that. That's yeah. that's meaningless in this game. And then he drills it. And you know what? I'm happy he did now. I'm thrilled that he did. What yeah, a night. sure. <laughs> Any other big um, takeaways you want to hit before we move on? Um, I think that covers it so far. Let's keep it rolling. I'll throw one. Cole Becker. He he hits the game winner. That's a clutch kick for a freshman. Yeah. He did have a pretty short miss earlier on, but he he hit a fifty two yarder himself that would have been good for him a little bit deeper. Um, so got it. Got to give him props and tough start to the season, but he made six in a row before he had that miss t- tonight. Um, if we're if we're jumping on the the Brendan Lewis hype train, why not why not give the kicker some love too? Um, there you go. Oh, we also got Con. I think Crosby had a sixty yarder, and so that tied that. That somebody brought up Crosby and I, as you would expect, <laughs> like if you're talking about kicking records, of course, somebody is bringing up Mason Crosby. Of course. Right. All right. Um, real quick. Want to remind you guys, Breckenridge brewery. If you guys were up in Boulder today, hopefully you stopped by the tailgate, got yourself some free Breckenridge beers. We do it before all the home games. You got one more to come check out. Um, but we just have a tailgate North end of Farron Breckenridge, because they're so awesome. And they actually partner with the buffs too. Because they're so awesome, they give us beer to give to you guys um, just for free. So we love them for that. We love them because the beer is so good. Uh, The seltzers are so good. I actually didn't have any. So typically I go up there and I'll have like one beer, like one seltzer. And today, just, I don't know. There there was never a moment where I grabbed one. Um, I was thinking they, they brought the Flabongo out, which is like a yard flamingo that is turned into a beer bong. What? <laughs> yeah, Flavongo. Well, that's a tailgate classic. But um, so when that came out, I was like, "Well, I haven't had my one beer. Maybe I need a pregame Flavongo." And I was like, "Do I want a video of me Flavongoing going around before this game?" And I was like, ah, "Kind of. It'd be cool, but also there's there's old people who matter too." But yeah. So the point is, Breckenridge though they made a lot of people happy today. And uh, that's what they do. They make good beer. They make good seltzers. They make good food down at the farmhouse. So go check that out, too. Uh, we really appreciate all the things that they do. Also, uh, this is potentially unethical, but I'll throw it out there anyway. I made some bets on the bus today. Uh, I, okay. I The first one came, I can't remember, was it 10-0? Did they get to 10-0? I'm, uh, okay, yeah, Colorado okay. was up 10 nothing. Oh, yeah, so yeah. 10-0. They were still plus money. And I was like, well, we know that they can hang. So the question coming into the game was like, do you, was the offense kind of a fluke against Oregon or was it for real? And at that point, we we're like, okay, we've seen enough to say it's for real. This is a this is a game. Spotting the buffs 10 points, sure, I'll take plus 165 on that. So I threw some on there. Later on, I doubled down. Um, and the game, what a guy. there was so much fun already. I, I didn't even think of it. I had totally forgotten until I was sitting up in the – um, post game press conference. I was like, "Are there any other games on tonight? Is there anything to watch tonight?" I was like, "I would like to bet on." Oh, what? I bet on that, and so that was nice. <laughs> uh, that's the kind of thing that happens when you bet with DraftKings Sportsbook. They are so good at the things that they do because you know what they want to do is entice you to bet with them, and we all know that. And the way they do that is by giving you odds boosts uh, to give you good props to bet on, all that kind of stuff. They really are the best. And right now, if you bet on any nfl game tomorrow if you're a new user five dollars five dollars on any team to win if you are right and that team wins you get two hundred dollars in free bets what more could you ask for it's it's a steal of a deal make sure you get in on that and i'll make another note i actually don't know if this is true after last week but before last week nobody in the nfl had been a seven and a half point or longer um underdog and won a game so let's find somebody who's who's like an eight point underdog or a favorite bet on them to win you'll get your 200 dollars in free bets and make sure you use the code dnvr when you sign up um must be 21 or older colorado only new customers only restrictions apply see draftkings.com slash sportsbook for details gambling problem call 1-800-522-4700 okay um let's jump in with the stock report 
Um, so, so typically when we do the stock report, I come in and I have some, some like players cooked up that I want to talk about today. I, I kind of, I don't know. Um, let's just start though with Brendan Lewis. I think that that's kind of an easy one. We'll start by saying his stock is very obviously up. There's really no arguing that at this point. Um, but are you buying it right now with it a little bit up or are you selling? Oh man. Um, I think I'm going to buy. Um, I already mentioned that these receivers are young. I think that they're going to develop all together with Lewis and really come up. Um, I'd expect someone like Brendan Rice to really emerge, not in this year, but you know, maybe next year. Um, I, I can't help but say up for Brendan Lewis. I think they need to open it up a bit more for him offensively. Um, and that just may be because he's a bit limited right now as a young player. Um, but I think there's opportunities that the buffs kind of leave on the field with him, um, you know, taking advantage of his athleticism, stuff like that. If they're able to do that moving forward, uh, way stock up on him way, way. Yep. I'm going to buy two. You know, I think that this is a, a tough conversation, just because I mean, the stock was low there for a minute. And if you were holding on to some, you could sell right now and, and be pretty happy with, with the way things went for you. At the same time, though, after what we saw tonight, like how do you not bet on him to, to just keep going? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bet on him to keep going because I'm, I'm hyped. I, I think that what we saw is replicable. I think that the more he plays the 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 more he's going to look like this i think that um i think that this offensive line is for real i think that the the adjustments that were made when william blayhost took over i think that those are going to help him continue to build on this stock and so for all those reasons yeah i'm 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 all in i'm i'm buying more at this point um jarek broussard that's another tough one. You know, this is yeah. this is a, a sell high moment potentially with him going for 150 yards. Stock is obviously up after tonight. Um, no 100 yard games this season before that. You interested in, in buying? You, you're going to sell a little bit off? What you thinking? I think I'm going to meet you in the middle. I'm just going to hold for a bit, but I'm going to hit the little star next to it and put it in my watch list just because, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, this offensive line is getting a bit better. Um, they do have a nice rotation going with the backs and it seems like they've kind of been riding the hot hand throughout the season. Um, it just so happens today that it was Jarek's day. Uh, I think he has an opportunity opportunities moving forward. I mean, UCLA struggled on the ground a lot recently. Uh, so there's going to be opportunities in this last month of the season for him to really elevate that stock even more, kind of bring it back to that last year, uh, point where it was at, where he was pac 12 offensive player of the year. Yep, and as you guys can see, Jarek is our DraftKings king of the game. There were some options tonight. Um, I, I was tempted to go Brendan Lewis because, I mean, look at what he did with three touchdowns. But at the end of the day, he still didn't hit 200 passing yards. <laughs> Jarek ran for 150. Like, you got to give the, you gotta give him the crown tonight, and he deserved it. Uh, and I will quickly segue from that into I'm selling the Jarek Broussard stock. Um, not because I don't think that he can replicate it, but, but what do we wait? I mean, I guess every week you do this, it goes up a little bit more, but at the same time, Hey, if you've been holding this long, it's up big right now. It's a chance to cash out. It's a chance to cash out and sure. hoping for the best and all that. But if you're buying Brendan Lewis stock, you're, you're buying, I'll buy some Brendan Rice stock. We're going to get to him next. Um, got to fund it somehow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Let's jump into Brennan Rice. Stock, yeah. stock down, I think. Stock down. Just a tick. Ah, just a tick, yeah. It is a conversation on this one because there were yeah. plays. I mean, he had a big touchdown, obviously. The, the return game looked good again. I mean, it's always going to look good. He's just a freak athlete. Um, buying or selling? I'm going to buy. Um, this, If you look at the box score, it doesn't look great, obviously. Only the one catch for the touchdown. But on that touchdown, you saw him kind of working with Brendan Lewis, um, performing the scramble drill really well. You really saw Rice disengage from that block that he was on in the edge and then just kind of drift back into the end zone, made a nice easy target for Lewis. He also had that second touchdown. He had an end around that was called uh, back, remember, from Chenault's hold. Yep. So he really should have had two touchdowns tonight. The box score is a bit deceiving when it comes to him. Um, but give him more opportunities, man. The guy can play. Yep. Big pass interference was the big thing. Um, but yeah, I was in the end zone. Like he ran right up to me 
when when that was over and it was like flexing, I was like, oh, this is the coolest video. This is going to do such a... <laughs> and then they called it back. And it's just uh-huh. like, well, what a waste. And then Montana Lamonius Craig, my guy, on the other side of the end zone gets a touchdown. It's like, yeah, cool. Good work. I actually right. saw him after the game. Um, we, we I talked to him quite a bit at the Buffs exhibition basketball game against Mines. He hang, hung out for a bit, and he's he's like a communications major. Um, and so we talked about some of that sort of stuff because he wants to get into doing this. Um, but after the game, I had a chance to talk to him, and I actually was like we handshake. And I kind of punched him a little bit too hard. I was like, "Yeah, nice touch." And I was like, "I hurt my hand. Can't be doing. <laughs> I can't be hurting his hand." Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll buy, I'm I'm buying Brendan Rice stock. Of course, I'm buying Brendan Rice stock. That's a that's an NFL football player, and if if you can get him in college, you you just buy the stock, and it's going to go up at some point. Um, so I'm all in on buying. Yeah, uh, listeners of the Draft Pod, no, we talk about bloodlines all the time, man, and mm-hmm. he's got some pretty damn good ones. So yeah, stock way up. He does. Um, Carl Durrell, stock up. You buying or are you selling? Oh man. Uh shoot. That's a tough one too. It's a I don't, really tough one. I'm leaning towards sell, but I kind of want to just hold on that one too. Um, you know, I've had my moments of, you know, just internal criticism watching the buffs and just thinking, eh, you know, that's a kind of iffy coaching decision there. But tonight, really, aside from the end of the game, how he kind of managed that last field goal, I thought he was really all right. Um, kind of mismanaged that uh the second to last play where they allowed that nine yard completion towards the end, you saw they were in like a, in a prevent defense weren't really up like in the receivers. I mean, you don't want to be in their face when they've got like 50 plus yards to the end zone, Mm -hmm. but you can't allow that easy sideline catch that put them in field goal range. So I'm just going to hold on him. We'll, we'll rejoin this conversation another date. Yep. I think that's probably the move. Um, I want to buy and I'm going to buy at some point. I think that, like, obviously, he deserves to be blamed for the fact that they've only won three games to this point. But I do think that maybe he's taken a little bit too much of a beating. Um, and I do think that because of that, there there's some value. You also look at the fact they're going to play at the Rose Bowl next week, and then Washington, and then Utah. There's going to be a better opportunity to buy Carl Durrell stock. They, they're not... I hope I get like cold takes exposed or whatever. (laughs) They're not going to win all those games. There's going to be a chance to buy them cheaper. So I'm going to buy them cheaper. I'm holding them with you. Um, Oh, there's a chat. How about Carson Wells? He always shows out great team leader when Nate is sidelined. Nate or or Carson. Yeah, he's, he's a, he's a great Buffalo. He's, he's put up crazy numbers before he's had quiet nights where he still contributed. I mean, there's plays tonight. He's not going to get credit for there. There was a third down where he forced an incompletion by just smoking the quarterback right after he'd thrown the ball. It doesn't count as a sack. It had the same effect though. It forced him to punt. And I guess a sack will have made him punt from five yards for the back, whatever. No, that's a really good football player. And it's just been so much fun to watch him play and watch him grow. Cause he's somebody who a couple years ago struggled. Um, he did have another sack. I think another tackle for loss on top of that. Um, stock up or stock down is kind of a tough one for him tonight. I go slightly up. Yeah, I think slightly up in that case. I might sell a bit. I mean, he was, he was fine. Um, you mentioned the versatility. He had a couple hurries also. So his impact was definitely felt. Um, but it's obvious who the defensive leader and who the best defensive player is. So, uh, when Landman is reinserted into the lineup, uh, you'll see Carson Wells kind of drift back, uh, not into the background, but you know, into his normal role where he won't be kind of used uh, as Landman would have been tonight in the you know blitzing kind of pass coverage roles. For sure, um, I'll hit Cole Becker. We gotta do Cole Becker, the kicker. Um, like I said, he he'd made six in a row after a rough start uh, before missing one tonight. Hits the game winner. I think that tonight, you know, he hits the fifty-two yarder. He hits the game winner. He goes, what was it, one for four? That's got to be stock up, I think. Um, you, you buying or selling, though? I think that's the tough part. Oh, man. I, I'm nervous to buy these kickers, man, because <laughs> you see some stuff like you see tonight where a 60 yarder is made, and then you know, the 34 yarder that just goes way off to the left side <laughs> is on the horizon, you know? Um, you know what? Screw it. I'll, I'll buy, um, the 52 yeah. yarder at the end of the first half, um, really put Colorado in a nice position. Just so happened that Oregon state happened to drive down right after that. 
Um, so it kind of lessened the impact of that field goal, but still was big and was pretty clutch moments. Um, hit the field goal in overtime, man. That's really all you could ask for. Absolutely. I like the chat bringing up the Christian Gonzalez uh, pass breakup in the end zone. It's nice. Just a beautiful play. I mean, that's that's why he's an NFL prospect. You know, he's got the length. He's got the speed. He closed so fast. He knocks that ball away so cleanly. Just a great play. He's a talented guy. Uh, anybody else you want to buy or sell? Off the top oh, of your head. Oh, man. Hmm. I think we hit him for right now. I think it's too early to get into Chenault at this point, but uh, he's a guy that we need that, to keep that's an eye a, on. That's a gamble. I take I, I mean, take a little bit. I mean, I wonder. He's another guy. When you go through all the things he's gone through, the the suspensions and all that, you have to wonder if he's like a transfer candidate, honestly. And I don't think he will. But if we're if we're buying or selling stock, I mean, you gotta define is it, is it stock at CU or is it just stock in general? Universal. I mean, yeah, he is one that I think you worry about. I'll buy. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm gonna I'm spending money tonight. No, I'll sprinkle it too. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> All right. Before we get out of here, we mentioned our DraftKings king of the game. It's Jared Broussard. Uh, we called him the player of the game, but we got to hit these helmet stickers. Who else impressed us tonight? Um, obviously, we've got uh, Brendan. Brendan Lewis is is the first helmet sticker I'm going to give out. Um, he was he was number two in the player of the game voting, I think. Unless you can make a kick for Cole Becker or a pitch for Cole Becker. Um, the miss makes it tougher, but yeah, I mean, Brendan, we've talked about it a lot, but just how nice is it to see that just, just a, there's nothing more fun than, than a good freshman quarterback. And for a couple of weeks, Colorado has, has, has had a good freshman quarterback. There's other things that have happened in the past, but we are where we are and things are looking good. And, and we've got three more games to see if he's actually this guy now. Yeah, agreed. Um, I'd give him one also. I, I would like to give five out to the offensive line because yes. that was a great performance uh, overall. Uh, already mentioned it, five yards per carry on the ground, 222 total yards. Um, not a sack, and I'm seeing only two hurries from Oregon State uh, de defensively. So they really kept Lewis protected, ensured that he was able to really settle into the game and ended up carrying him to the victory. Yeah, and I'm going to make it six because uh, William Vlahos – Offensive line yeah. coach, he deserves it nice. too. What a group. Uh, we came into the season expecting a good offensive line for Colorado. Maybe not the best in the Pac-12, but but a good offensive line. And it was disappointing when it didn't happen, especially knowing the identity of this team. You know, you have the returning Pac-12 player of the year in Jarek Broussard at running back. You have a freshman quarterback who's who's taking over. It hurt not having a good offensive line. And I, I don't know if, you, if we're looking for silver linings in this season, the fact that we all had to learn just how important an offensive line is, uh, you know, my silver line, we had our Madden league draft, the DNVR Madden league. If you guys haven't heard about this, we've got 32 players who each have a team. And every year, the new Madden, we do it until the next Madden comes out. So you get through like seven seasons with that team, but you start with a fantasy draft. So we all draft our entire rosters. And we just had ours for the, for the new game a couple weeks ago. And I just got all offensive linemen and like, I've got Tristan Wirfs, who's just incredible. And he's 22. And that would not have happened if not for the buffs, offensive line struggles. I was like, I just can't go through this. Not me. Um, there's a little tangent, but uh, <laughs> helmet stickers. What you get the offensive line. I'll, I'll give you uh, how about Quinn Perry uh, stepping in for Nate Landman. Not an easy thing to do. And and he stepped up. I we I see that in the chat as well. Um, but just a good solid game. I actually don't have the stats pulled up right now. I should be looking at those. I got them here. Uh nine total tackles, eight solo, one tackle for loss. Led the team in tackles with those nine tackles. Yeah. So yeah, I mean for someone stepping into a huge role like that, replacing the defensive captain, you really can't ask for much more. Um, you're basically just hoping that he doesn't expose himself. Um, and he was perfectly fine. Uh, I know. I'm. It's exciting, especially because you know. I mean, you you don't have Nate Lamman next year. You don't have Robert Barnes next year either. And Robert Barnes right. isn't an every down linebacker at this point, but he's he's kind of their cover guy. That the dime linebacker who comes in there. So you got to replace your Mike. You've got to replace that spot. Quinn Perry. He did get burned on an overthrow, but we don't need to talk about that right now. Um, 
he's he's that Mike as it stands right now, and and they've got to piece together this linebacking core, which has been a strength for quite a while. Um, definitely a positive sign tonight. Uh, who you got next? Uh, I got to go with Jarek Broussard. If I give it to the offensive line, someone's got to be carrying the rock. Yep. And Jarek Broussard looked awesome. Uh, finally had that explosive run. Didn't quite take it the distance, um, but had a real nice run that really flipped the field and made that buffs drive a lot easier. I can't remember if they ended up scoring or not, um, but he was awesome. Really looked like his old self was explosive, hit the holes hard, was you know playing with leverage. Really, that's probably the most impressive thing to me about his game is how small he is. He doesn't care, man. He'll put the shoulder down and he'll try to run over guys. It's awesome. Yep. He it just he is so much fun to watch. I think I, when he's at his best, because he just gets up the field so fast, but doesn't yeah. it? It almost feels like he's moving like a crab, almost, which might sound crazy, <laughs> yeah. but it's just like it. He's he seems so in control and just kind of like wiggling his yep. way up there, but he's just flying as he does it. Just a, a pleasure every single time that he gets the ball. He just gets so excited, and if he gets through that first level, who knows what's going to happen? And tonight he was able to break a couple. Hey, there's Mel Tucker on my TV right now. Let's, I mean, oh, no, let's not. Go. Oh no, they they lost. They we lost. can't go there. We they should lost. go there tonight. <laughs> they they showed the the final score of that game on the on the screen in the stadium. Crowd oh man, insane. <laughs> I'm I'm right there good, with you. We don't you. need to go too deep down that road. <laughs> we don't need to because uh, his team put a, a hurting on the Wolverines last week too. So yeah, we yeah, can let it be. About that. It's sorry all. about that. <laughs> um. Let's see. Uh, oh, Daniel Arias. I've got to give one to Daniel Arias. He's 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 had a tough run at Colorado. Like if we're just being honest, you know, he was one. What before the? I think was it the 2019 season? I can't remember if it was 2019 or 2020. I think it was 2019. The Katie Nixon said that he was DK Metcalf Jr. And, oh no! <laughs> and and he. I've, I mean, nobody could live up to that hype. Nobody could. Right. But he struggled, and he's had some big drops. He, had, he dropped a touchdown in the Nebraska game, and that's something that fans aren't going to forget easily. He had a big drop in the AM game. He's made some plays as well, but he's been pretty quiet for the most part. Tonight, I, I can't be the only person who saw that ball in the air when he was open in the end zone and thought, please, like, <laughs> don't, this can't be the story again. Like, it can't. And, and he caught the ball. And I, I, in those situations, like you just have to think for a guy like that, it has it has to be going through his mind too, right? Like I, I have sure. a lot of fun asking these guys, like, what's what are you thinking, like when these things are happening? Like Brady Russell, like you get the ball, you turn up field, there's a guy there, like what's going through your head? And he's like, well, half the time I just black out. But like last week, when it happened, it was like there's a guy in front of me, I can't go around him. I have to go through him, so I guess I'll just go through him. And it's like, oh, okay, so that's how that goes. But yeah, for Daniel Arias, it has to be like, <laughs> oh no, not again! Like he has to have, he has to be thinking the same thing we're thinking. But he catches it. He had an, another catch, uh, two catches, fifty-two yards, a touchdown. Good for him. And, and it's just fun to see a guy like that make some plays because he's got another year, I and mean, he still has time to to break out and put all of that potential use. He's massive. He's crazy fast. There's a reason he was called DK Metcalf Jr. Um, well, we'll see. I'm excited. Yeah, the uh, the route on the touchdown, the long one, was just a beautiful route, man. The corner was completely turned around. Um, so I didn't get to see that. I saw a tweet about oh. it, and so I I searched like on uh, so on Tweet Deck you can do the thing where it's like search for Arius and every right. every tweet. Of the uses the word Arius pops up and it'll just keep coming in live. And I was like, well, at some point somebody's going to post a replay. And so I'll just see it when it pops up right there. And it never did. I was like, no, I want to see this. I want to hype it up because I'm excited for the guy after everything he's gone through. But I'm what, what, what did he do? So like in and so, out or what? Yeah, it was a double move. It was kind of like a, like a hitch and go type thing. Um, okay. Went about 10 yards upfield, cut outside and the defensive back, they're playing zone. So he kind of felt them to the outside uh, but he let Arias get behind him, and as soon as he got behind him, just turned it upfield, and that's why he was open by like 20 yards or something crazy, however much yardage it was. He was wide open. I think that's what brought back the memories. But um, I've got one more helmet sticker I want to give out. Oh, Cole Becker, of course. We got, um, there you we've got. we talked yep. about Cole Becker. You know why Cole Becker's getting a helmet sticker. We don't got to talk about that. Um, but also, uh, Mark Perry. 
he's i mean we've talked about him quite a bit on this show um mostly saying you know you, you look around this defense you have christian gonzalez you have mckay black you have nate lamb and carson wells mustafa terrence like so many of these guys and and it's hard to be one of the other couple of guys who hasn't established themselves as you know if if you're a pack 12 or all pack 12 voter there's like those seven, eight guys on this team that you're like, okay, better, better tune in, better see what they're doing because this is going to come up. And when you make a mistake and he made a couple last week, he missed a couple tackles loudly. Um, and this week he made a great play, um, breaking on the ball, coming down from the safety spot, gets all the way down the sideline, breaks it up. That was early. And, you see stuff like that, and you're like, that's growth. Because we all know the tools that he has. He has good size. He's fast. He's he's on the 4x100 team for CU. Like, he's crazy fast. But just getting the mental processing up so that he knows how to play with that speed. And we saw that on that play, which was fun. And he also had a tackle for loss. Had some other tackles, too. But I want to give him a shout-out. I got one final one too. Um, I'll right. just give Christian Gonzalez one. I thought he was pretty solid all around. The pass breakup in the end zone was beautiful. Um, you could see that length in action at times, um, just really kind of sticky as a defender. And overall, just a really good player. I'm really excited to watch him as he gets older and just grows as a football player because as we talked about, um, the intangibles or the tangibles, I guess, are there. The speed and size yeah. and length are all there. So he's got so much room for potential. Pedigree too. You know, he comes from yeah. a sprinter family. His sister's on the Columbia national team, all sorts of that stuff in his background as well. Um, that's a good one. He's he's one you can forget about just because he's so good. He's exactly. Yep. That's those that it's that weird thing about corners, man. You don't want to hear about them because that means they're shutting it down. If you hear their name a lot, it's generally not good. Absolutely. I see a chat coming through with Jalen Sami, Mustafa Johnson. Those are good calls too. I think that's going to do it for tonight. I think that's going to do it. Oh, it's after midnight. I've got to write. I've got to put together my responsibilities for the tailgate at 930 <laughs> this morning. You guys all better show up. I'm going to be tired. That's always a trip. I'm going to be drinking on top of that. Um, what else do we have to plug? Oh, here's the other thing. If you can't sleep because of the hype Go check out our basketball preview. We did a big basketball preview. We talked about everybody on the team, all that stuff. It's on this DMVR YouTube channel. Don't miss that before the game on Tuesday. Make sure you see it. Um, and that's all I've got for you. We'll be back with the DMVR Buffs podcast on Monday. See you guys then.